Welcome to the next video in our What's Next for Planet Zoo series. Today's edition covers the subcontinent of Southeast Asia. This is another densely biodiverse region that is quite underrepresented in the Planet Zoo game, offering up opportunities for an enticing selection of unique animals that are relevant in captivity. This region is especially famous for its primate and reptile diversity. Furthermore, Southeast Asia suffers from habitat degradation on a catastrophic level. Rainforests are disappearing here faster than anywhere on Earth. As a result, almost all animals listed in this video are threatened in some way, posing an interesting conservationally focused scope of analysis. Since this is the smallest area we have covered in this series, it is sensible to consider first a number of overarching packs encompassing the region as a whole. Our first idea is thus a general Southeast Asia pack that covers animals found on the Southeast Asian mainland, i.e. the Malai Peninsula and Indochina proper. These animals all have strong representation in zoos and rank among the most famous captive exports from this subcontinent. We start with the chosen flagship, the Sun Bear. Known for its orange crescent shaped marking on its chest, giving it its common name, the sun bear is the only exclusive tropical rainforest bear of Southeast Asia, and as such does not hibernate. As part of an international captive breeding program, the sun bear enjoys wide ranging representation in captivity and can be found in many major zoological institutes worldwide, resultingly an extremely likely addition if ever the chance arises. Southeast Asia has quite fruitful variety of cat species as well, of which the clouded leopard is no doubt a highlight. Sporting black, white and greyish cloudy blotches, the clouded leopard is a household name due to its recognizability and prevalence in captivity, having been kept in zoos since the early 20th century. It is also notable for appearing in a variety of other zoo games, making it another must-see inclusion that should have been added into the base game, but we can expect it probably for the near future. A somewhat surprising but viable alternative might be the Asian Golden Cat. Although not as famous as the Clouded Leopard, this is a similarly sized Southeast Asian rainforest cat with its own unique fur pattern that proves to be an attractive specimen, currently enjoying strong captive representation especially in European zoos. Although some high profile Southeast Asian and Australian zoos also keep the animal, such as in Singapore. The Binturong or Bear Cat is another highly represented zoo animal and a keystone varied specimen of Southeast Asia. Although considered vulnerable across its range, it is quite successful in the region, occurring over most of Indochina, the Bengal, the Malai Peninsula, Sumatra, Borneo and Java. An alternative is the Dole, really the only canid that inhabits the Southeast Asian tropical rainforest biome, but they can be found as far north as alpine regions in the Tibetan steppe. Despite this, they are an endangered species with very limited appearances in captivity, but recent high profile institutions have begun showcasing the animal, such as in Bronx Zoo who opened their new doll exhibit last year. Southeast Asia's most notable large herbivore has to be the Malayan taper. This is not only a remarkable taper specimen with its black and white coloration, but also its endangered status and position as a quintessential Southeast Asian animal and a prestigious zoo animal makes it a prime candidate for the release roster. Now it is expected to grace the game eventually. Despite the prevalence of domesticated water buffalo in this region, the ancestral wild water buffalo is endangered with less than 4,000 individuals left in the wild. Competition and hybridization with domestic varieties are key threats to the animal, but it would struggle to displace the Malayan taper as an alternative and suffers from overlap with the African buffalo. For our last slot, we cover primates, of which these next two mainland species have some representation in zoos. The red shanked duke is among the most strikingly coloured of all primates, living exclusively in the trees of the Indo Chinese highlands. Their limited range exacerbates their status as an endangered species and contributes to their rarity, making them a highly lucrative specimen. The last North American specimen was at Philadelphia Zoo, while some European and Asian institutions still hold this very exclusive primate. One of the most common mainland Southeast Asian primates in captivity today is the endangered La Gibbon. Its huge captive population contributes to a wide understanding of this animal. However, as a gibbon, it will suffer from competition with a host of other gibbon species we will inevitably cover and thus can be considered as a strong alternative but not a definite for the primate slot. The plight of deforestation and other human-induced factors in Southeast Asia has also rendered many animals in this region critically endangered. In this pack, we explore some of the various close-to-extinction species that have at least had a current or historic occurrence in captivity, making them not in the realm of impossibility. 
The first is the Sayola, the least understood large mammal in the world, rarely sighted and have only been known to Western biologists since the late 20th century. Their distribution in remote, highly inaccessible terrain in the Vietnamese highlands, their almost mythical status in local culture, and their short horns have dubbed their affectionate name the Asian Unicorn. Several attempts at captivating the Sayola have been performed in the past, but all have been unsuccessful over a long term. Its intrigue would present a compelling case for representation in the Planet 2 game. The alternative is the Tamaraw, a relative of the water buffalo that is restricted to the Philippine island of Mindoro. At about a meter high, it is an example of insular dwarfism and offers a smaller specimen from the usually stockier members of the bovine subfamily, such as the African buffalo and bison that have so far been added. Crucially, its limited range on such a small island habitat creates enormous conservational pressure, but there are ongoing efforts to save the animal. For instance, one individual has been bred in captivity stemming from the Tamaraw Conservation Project. Our next slot covers two critically endangered crocodilians of Southeast Asia. The Philippine crocodile is the most critically endangered crocodilian in the world, caused by widespread poaching and competition with the ever-increasing population of saltwater crocodiles. Although it has little in the way of uniqueness, and thus is not a highly requested species, its severely threatened status deserves consideration. Furthermore, it does make several high-profile showcases in zoos where it is considered prestigious assets due to their rarity, such as in London, Smithsonian and Melbourne zoos. Likewise, the Siamese crocodile lacks any distinguishing features and for the most part resembles a typical member of the crocodilian family, but again, its critical endangered status coupled with the fact this species is extensively bred in captivity suggests a decent alternative. Moscow and Barcelona zoos are some of the institutions which keep this animal. We cover smaller arboreal animals next, starting with the Sunda pangolin. Closely related to the Chinese pangolin, it differs in its behavior as an almost exclusive tree dwelling species and would help to boost the variety of this niche in the game. Singapore Zoo currently holds the highest profile Sunda pangolin captive population in its night safari. Slow lorises are an unexplored animal group thus far, and the Javan species presents a compelling case for an alternative in this slot. They are unique primates that are similar in appearance and distantly related to the lemurs. Despite their notorious difficulties with breeding, there are strong captive populations in a number of zoos, owing to their highly trafficked nature, the major reason for their threatened status. A number of primates in Southeast Asia are also critically endangered. The northern white-cheeked gibbon is the most famous as it is quite common in captivity such as in Lincoln Park, Smithsonian and London zoos. Males of this species are unmistakable with their prominent cheek tufts. The alternative white-headed langur is among the rarest primates in the world, restricted to two populations in northern Vietnam and southern China. It is currently only exhibited in Chinese zoological institutions with the Shanghai Zoo the most notable. Confined to northern Cambodia, the giant ibis is the first of our critically endangered bird considerations. The largest ibis in the world by far has unfortunately less than 200 mature individuals in the wild and only one captive specimen in the Angkor Center for Conservation of Biodiversity. The alternative Edwards pheasant is a prominent species in captivity found in many zoos, animal parks or other various avifauna habitations around the world, but wild populations number less than 250 individuals. This is a bird with a strikingly iridescent blue feathering that can be implemented similar to the peafowl. Southeast Asia is famed for its reptile diversity, but none more famous than this region's snakes, to the point where we can even dedicate an entire pack to them. For obvious reasons, since almost all of these can be showcased inside the exhibit mechanic of the Planet Zoo game, this pack should be significantly reduced in price for what it offers. The flagship is the King Cobra, the world's longest venomous snake and prominent over India, Southeast Asia and Southern China. Almost every reputable zoo in the world has a King Cobra in its exhibition. An alternative cobra species is the Indochinese Spitting Cobra, famed for its ability to spit venom from its mouth. Considerably rarer in captivity than other cobras, they nevertheless make high-profile showcases in the most exclusive of zoo rosters, such as at Cincinnati Zoo. The longest snake in the world is the reticulated python, and this bear moth of a snake is found over much of Southeast Asia and has gained a deadly reputation for attacks on humans. 
Like the South American green anaconda, which it rivals in size, the reticulated python poses huge difficulties to exhibit in captivity. But despite this, many institutions do have the funding to provide for these cumbersome snakes, and thus this animal can be found in many zoos around the world. The white-lipped pit viper has been touted as Southeast Asia's most beautiful snake, appearing in lime green or blue-gray shades. As a result, this is another commonly exhibited snake in zoos. The alternative is the banded crates, an elapid that fuss among the most venomous snakes of the world. The banded crate is the largest member of the crates and famed for its banded patterning and snake eating behavior, where it also engages in cannibalism and will prey on other crates or even its own species. Cat-eyed snakes from the colubrid family include the mangrove snake, widely distributed over Southeast Asia and found in tropical rainforests as well as mangrove swamps, in which its common name derives. A venomous and potentially aggressive snake, its glossy black and yellow appearance and cat eyes make it a decent showcase in terrariums. Another candidate is the green cat snake. In this species, the cat eyes are especially prominent. Finally, we end this pack with the Asian vine snake or oriental whip snake. This slender snake with its green coloration often resembles a vine and can camouflage effectively in well-designed terrariums. It is for this reason it has recently gained recognition as a popular species in the pet trade that has also seen its rise in zoological exhibitions. Moving on to packs that cover specific regions, our next pack covers the archipelago of the Philippines. From a zoo game standpoint, these islands don't have many species commonly associated as core zoo specimens, but it does pose a range of threatened animals that are worth considering. However, the addition of aviary mechanics for the future can allow for some unique avian fauna from the isles, such as the critically endangered Philippine eagle or the diverse range of rainforest birds such as hornbills or parrots. In terms of land animals, the aforementioned Philippine crocodile and tamaraw should lead this lineup as the most famous cases of threatened animals from the isles. In the case of the crocodile, it is already well established in zoos and needs no argument as the flagship. Whereas the tamaraw may suffer from overlap with buffaloes, but it is considered a national symbol of the Philippines and deserves recognition. The next slot we cover are deer. And although deer are ever present in Southeast Asia, the Philippines is home to two relatively unique threatened species. The Visayan spotted deer is a rainforest dwelling cervid from the central Philippine Isles, but its range is heavily sporadic and population numbers around 300 individuals. Thus, it is one of the most threatened of all deer species. Conversely, it is quite famous in European zoos with major institutions such as Edinburgh, Chester and Berlin zoos showcasing the identifiable short thick antlers and spotted fuzzy fur of this small deer. The alternative Calamian deer is a much more typical deer species in appearance, but likewise is endangered and enjoys decent captive representation in North American zoos, including Los Angeles and San Diego zoos. A critically endangered yet quite unique pig species is the Visayan's warty pig. With its mohawk and white streaks across the face, this is an attractive specimen to bolster the swine variety of the game. Coupled with its tantalizingly desperate conservation status and its appearance in many European and North American zoo rosters, the Visayan warty pig earns itself as a strong candidate from the Philippines. Finally, we cover exhibit reptiles of the islands. There are still no turtles in the game as of yet, and the Philippine forest turtle could be an interesting debut choice. This turtle was rediscovered in 2001 after fears it was extinct due to rampant collection for the pet trade and habitat loss. It is considered a popular specimen for turtle hobbyists, mainly due to its rarity and status as a critically endangered, but it has very little zoological representation outside of the pet trade. Alternatively, the Gray's Monitor is the most famous lizard from the Philippines. It is not exhibited as commonly as many other monitors due to difficulties with captive breeding, but it is a relatively large specimen that is vulnerable. The next several packs will cover the major islands of Indonesia, each diverse enough to offer compelling considerations for the roster. First up, Sumatra home to rich tropical rainforests that support a diverse array of popular and endemic Southeast Asian animals, many of which are prestigious staples in zoos. Unfortunately, the island is also suffering from extreme deforestation rates, which has resultingly caused endangerment to many animals on this list. The flagship is the Sumatran tiger, which we covered in our inaugural video as part of the Rare Cats pack. 
An extremely popular tiger subspecies, the Sumatran variety is the second most exhibited in zoos behind the Siberian tiger globally, with strong, pure populations breeding in Australian and European zoos. Although we already have two tiger variants, the Sumatran is one of the smallest tigers but pertains the highest stripe frequencies. Males also display a prominent ruff, making the animal quite identifiable compared to the Bengal and Siberian designs. Since tigers are so commonplace in zoos, and the Sumatran represents a large majority of them, it should be a major consideration. The Sumatran rhinoceros is arguably the island's second most famous mammal after the tiger. Critically endangered, the population of this species is estimated to be less than 80 individuals. Although this species is now absent from any zoological institution from the Western world, it has had a storied history, with exhibitions in London Zoo's early history in the 19th century, up until the last European specimen at Copenhagen Zoo passed away in 1972. In North America, the Sumatran rhinoceros was most famous for the fruitful breeding efforts at Cincinnati Zoo, the last specimen in the Western world returning to Indonesia in 2015. The next candidate is the Sumatran Cerro, a forest-dwelling goat antelope and the most notable ungulate in Sumatra. Despite no zoo appearances in North America or Europe, it is commonplace in reputable Asian zoos. This animal would help to bolster the niche forest caprid variety, of which many members of this group are from alpine biomes. Two remarkable primates live in Sumatra. The first is the siamang, a gibbon species known for their jet black coloration and booming calls emanating from throat sacs. The largest gibbon species on earth is also endangered, but has great success in captivity where it can live up to 40 years. Alternatively, the agile gibbon is another primate with a stronghold in Sumatra. Likewise to the siamang, they are also endangered but enjoy a reasonable representation in captivity. Finally, we end with the Asian water monitor. Although this animal is found over much of coastal South and Southeast Asia, including much of Indonesia, Sumatra represents a key region of dominance where they take advantage of the plentiful mangrove and wetland habitats. A successful predator both on land and in the water, Asian water monitors transfer this success to captivity, where today they are kept in 47 zoos globally. Borneo is the third largest island and home to one of the oldest rainforests in the world. A historic center of evolution, Borneo is home to many endemic animals that are found nowhere else in Southeast Asia, as well as providing a haven for biodiversity due to its extensive rainforest cover. But in recent history, this has steadily been eroded by habitat degradation. The only Southeast Asian mammal in Planet Zoo so far is from this island, the Bonean orangutan. Another of the world's most recognizable primates is the proboscis monkey, of which it is endemic to Borneo. Males of this species sport their unmistakable fleshy nose, believed to accentuate their vocalizations. Again, like many animals in Southeast Asia, the proboscis monkey is endangered and due to their selective diet of local fruits and leaves, they struggle to adapt to the confines in captivity. Although there was an immense captive record of the animal in the West, by 1997 no Western zoos showcased this animal. Today it can only be found in Asian institutions. Singapore Zoo currently contains the largest and most successful population of proboscis monkey. The Bonian bearded pig is another variety of Southeast Asian forest pig. This species is reasonably identifiable, widely distributed over the island, and acts as a major seed disperser and gardener in its rainforest biome. Its major reason for inclusion is its fruitful appearances in zoos, with major institutions such as London, Berlin, and Singapore Zoo showcasing this animal. A few notable wild cats inhabit this island, including the marbled cat. This species is also found in Sumatra and on the mainland as far north as the Himalayan foothills. They're noted for their blotches on the fur that resemble marbling, a more defined patterning compared to the clouded leopard. They are comparable to the ocelot of South America and can be an addition to bolster the small rainforest cat niche, although their captive record is quite sporadic. Alternatively, an even rarer species is the bay cat. Poorly understood and seldom sighted, the bay cat is one of the more mysterious feline candidates and with only one zoo appearance recorded in history, it is an unlikely consideration. Borneo is also home to a subspecies of the Asian elephant in the pygmy elephant, confined to the northeastern region of the island, by far the most isolated of all the Asian elephant populations. 
Consequently, they are one of the more threatened subspecies, but highly prioritized in conservation programs due to their genetic distinctiveness, culminating in attempts to bring this animal into more institutions. Oregon Zoo, for instance, has the only case of this animal in North America. Finally, we end with another crocodilian, but a unique one in its own right, the false gharial. Its name is in relation to its similarities with the Indian gharial, but both species are believed to share a common ancestor and thus is classified in the same family. It is exhibited in captivity even more than the gharial due to the latter's rarity, with many false gharials rescued from illegal trafficking. Today, many reputable institutions showcase this species and it presents itself as a pretty commonplace zoo animal. Java historically was another major biodiversity hotspot of Indonesia. Today, Java is the world's most populous island and home to more than half of Indonesia's inhabitants. Consequently, it has resulted in extreme conservational concerns for the island's wildlife. The creation of Ujong Kulon National Park in the westernmost tip of the island has created a repository for the last vestiges of unique fauna that are bordering on extinction, and many animals in this list are restricted to this location. Of these, the Javan rhinoceros is the highest profile, considered by many to be the most critically endangered mammal on Earth, with around 40 to 60 individuals remaining in the wild. Historically ranging over most of Southeast Asia, the last Javan rhinoceros on the mainland was poached by hunters in Vietnam in 2010. Today, the entire population of Javan rhinos exists solely inside the Ujong Kulon National Park with concerns about genetic inbreeding depression and their minimal habitat size capping any potential population growth. Furthermore, Javan rhinoceros have not been exhibited in a zoological setting for more than a century, but this only enhances the allure of adding this animal into the game. With less than 250 individuals left, the Javan leopard is one of four critically endangered leopard subspecies, the others being the Amur, Arabian and Indo-Chinese. Fortunately, there is a growing captive population maintained by European zoos with the most famous exhibits at Berlin and Prague Zoo. Although no doubt suffering from overlap since no leopards have been introduced yet, it is a strong candidate to represent the entire species. The Javan Rusa is a native deer of Java, Bali and Timor, but has since been introduced to other Indonesian islands and localities around the world. A sociable species, they form large herds that are rarely seen from any animals in such critical habitats, proving to be an adaptable species that also thrive in captivity. Zoos that keep the Javan leopard tend to also exhibit the Javan Rusa in Javan themed sections of their park. An alternative is the Java mouse deer, part of the family of chevrotains. This species is the smallest living ungulate and would present as an interesting candidate just for its size alone. Of course, Java is also home to its own selection of unique primates. The most famous is the Javan lutung, found in major places such as Berlin, Antwerp and Bronx zoos. Its glossy orange coloration, social behavior and active diurnal arboreal lifestyle prove to be a popular zoo attraction. Alternatively, another gibbon species is the silvery gibbon. It can be considered as an endemic resident of Java and a reasonably well known in its own right, but would be overshadowed by species such as the La Gibbon or Siamang. Finally, we end with the green peafowl. Compared to the Indian or the blue peafowl in the game, it instead features an iridescent green or turquoise shade. More importantly, it is endangered, whereas the former isn't, with sporadic distribution in mainland Southeast Asia, but Java serves as a major refuge of the bird and in fact the only place where the bird can be found in the Indonesian Isles. Thus, it is often called the Javan peafowl. Understandably, not as populous in zoos compared to the Indian peafowl, it is nevertheless a, still a well-represented captive bird specimen overall, a culturally significant species and emblematic of endangered avifauna. The island of Sulawesi or Celebes is the next location. With most of its lowland forests destroyed, Sulawesi has a less dense rainforest biome compared to other islands forcing many of its endemic residents to the montane forest or forcing adaptation to the wetlands and open woodland environments. The first animal considered is a unique marsupial, indicating the intermediate biological boundary between the Southeast Asian realms and the Australian Pacific realms. The Sulawesi bear couscous resembles a tailed koala and would be one of the more interesting arboreal mammal inclusions for the roster. 
Their recent popularity surge, thanks to the first recorded captive birth at Rocklaw Zoo in Poland, has ushered growing interest in the animal, and it is an up-and-coming possibility for the roster. The next candidate, the Babarusa, has been heavily requested by the community, known for males sporting upward-curving canine tusks which eventually pierce their own skulls. This striking appearance renders huge popularity, and the animal can be found in zoos globally, culminating in a very likely chance for it to be considered for the game as a frontrunner for swine diversity. The Anoa is an endangered relative of the water buffalo and tamaraw, endemic to Sulawesi. Both species inhabit respective elevations within the island. The lowland primarily lives in wetland habitats, whilst the mountain prefers denser montane forests. The lowland Anoa is by far the more exhibited species. The mountain is much rarer, though both represent the niche of exotic endangered forest buffalo. The most famous primate on the island is the Celebes crested macaque, known for its facial displays that resemble grinning or smiling. Critically endangered, it is restricted to the northeastern peninsula of Sulawesi. Despite this, it is fairly common in captivity and can be found in a number of European, North American and Asian zoos. Finally, we end the Sulawesi pack with the Malio, an endangered ground-dwelling bird. Although fairly unique, Malios are very rare in zoos and possibly too obscure to be realistically considered. In our final pack of Southeast Asia, we explore New Guinea, a large island noted for its biodiversity. Although covering less than 0.5% of Earth's surface, New Guinea contains between 5 to 10% of the total species on this planet. Unlike many other locations in Southeast Asia, New Guinea still contains large tracts of pristine environments due to the slower rate of human colonization. Biologically speaking, New Guinea has more commonality with Australia, showcasing a range of marsupial and monotreme animals, and would be a great region for aviary additions with its birds of paradise. The tree kangaroos are some of New Guinea's most renowned animals, macropods adapted to an arboreal lifestyle. Because of this, they are adored in zoos and represent a very unique mammalian candidate. The goodfellows and matskis are two captive kept species most commonly associated in zoos. The southern cassowary, of which we covered in our Australia pack, also inhabits large sections of the island and can be considered as much of a New Guinean bird as it is an Australian icon. The northern variety, solely endemic to New Guinea, is worth a mention, but quite frankly, because of the gulf in size, familiarity, and lack of zoo appearances, there should be no contest with the southern cassowary. Wallabies are smaller macropods, usually overshadowed by the larger kangaroos on the Australian continent, but in New Guinea, which lacks kangaroos, wallabies are the dominant ground macropod varieties. The agile wallaby is kept in select zoo locations and represents a keystone New Guinea species. The white striped Decopsis, although relatively obscure, is quite a common sighting in New Guinea's tropical jungles. Even more surprising is its introduction into European zoos, where it is considered an exotic macropod variety. It should not be the most prioritized wallaby, however. The New Guinea singing dog is a canine with a complicated taxonomic record, initially considered to be a separate canis species, but better genetic studies have indicated a close relation to the Australian dingo. As a result, both dogs resemble one another in appearance. Its name stems from its distinctive vocalization that is described as a melodious howls. Perhaps its popularity is a result of its wide appreciation in North American zoos, where 18 institutions keep the animal. Regardless, it will suffer overlap with the dingo. Finally, two species of monitor from New Guinea are extremely common in zoos, the emerald tree and crocodile monitor. The emerald tree monitor is actually the second most exhibited monitor lizard after the Komodo dragon, found in 61 zoos worldwide, and its unique green coloration and arboreal lifestyle makes it a lucrative addition. The crocodile monitor, found in 27 zoos, does not lack representation either, often considered one of the longest monitor lizards, although far less massive than the Komodo dragon. For this reason, it is a large monitor candidate that could be realistically showcased in an open habitat setting similar to the Nile monitor. The New Guinea crocodile could be a consideration for the reptile slot, but its similarities with the critically endangered Philippine crocodile and lack of major zoo exhibitions make it a far less desired species. For our special pack of this video, let's take a look back at Australia, 
But this time, instead of covering the major, highly sought after iconic animals of the continent we covered back in our first inaugural video, let's take a second revision of some extra possible animals that are perhaps lesser known, but could be decent additions for the Planet Zoo roster. The first is the tiger quoll. This is a carnivorous marsupial that gets overlooked by its much more famous family member, the Tasmanian Devil. The tiger quoll is unmistakable with its white spots, and although quite rare in captivity globally, they are ever-present in Australian zoos. Wallabies were overlooked in our first video as they are smaller, less renowned members against their kangaroo cousins. However, the red-necked wallaby is actually the most exhibited macropod globally. In fact, it is one of the most common zoo animals, period. They have garnered a reputation as prolific breeders in captivity and have staged many escapes from zoos where they have established feral populations. Alternatively, the yellow-footed rock wallaby is famed for its coloration and preference for rocky terrain, earning its mild appreciation in a select number of zoos lucky enough to house them. A smaller macropod, the quokka, is considered the world's friendliest animal. When encountered in the wild, they readily approach and interact with humans, cementing their status as an inquisitive and curious creature. In Australia, their appearances in zoos are widespread, but outside the continent, they are rare. An alternative is a desert-dwelling nocturnal marsupial called the Greater Bilby. These are much shyer animals, usually exhibited in indoor, artificial nighttime terrariums. The freshwater crocodile is outclassed in the food chain by the saltwater crocodile, but it is Australia's other notable crocodilian. Smaller, less aggressive and sporting a slender snout, freshwater crocodiles are still found worldwide in captivity and are a preference for smaller zoos which cannot accommodate the large size restraints of its much greater cousin. Australia has its share of resident penguins as well, none more iconic than the little or fairy penguin. They nest along virtually the entire southern coastline of the continent. Many Australian and New Zealand institutions showcase the animal, but it has begun seeing exhibition in North America, particularly at the Louisville and Bronx zoos. Alternatively, Australia's iconic superb lyrebird could be a consideration as a spectacularly adorned ground-dwelling bird. Besides its appearance, the lyrebird has one of the most sophisticated and complex voice skills in the animal kingdom, able to mimic other bird sounds, musical instruments, and noises made by humans. It is, however, very rare in captivity. That ends our What's Next for Planet Zoo video for Southeast Asia, with a special revisit to the Australian continent there at the end. There is only one region left, Greater Asia, where we will cover the rest of the unexplored Asian continent, including South Asia and East Asia. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed today's content and stay tuned for the next video. Catch you guys later.